Y'all ready? Ready, 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 y'all ready, y'all ready, y'all ready? Welcome to the Upside Down Smiley Show where we talk about real life, we don't take life too seriously, and we hear the stories of everyday people. My name is Shireen, and today we got Robbie Rhythms in the building. And today we're gonna be talking about music. Cue the intro. Uh, singing earlier Music makes the people come together. yeah and I was thinking about how we met you the old-fashioned way in like a social gathering you know what I mean yeah. like we met you at a party and I I think I was like your background dancer for a performance Ooh. yeah y'all were like singing and then I was just like snapping in the back yeah I was probably singing <laughs> <laughs> Robbie is a musician. What are your musical expressions these days? Well, um, I've been playing piano since I was four. I've been classically trained. And then I moved on from that to start DJing when I was like a teenager. Uh-huh. And then after that, I started getting into uh, electronic equipment you see here. Uh-huh. So um, I pretty much consider these like instruments my beat pads. And so that's like the main thing that I use now to kind of go ahead and express music. I do produce music for other artists. Uh, I pretty much make, I make lo-fi music. I do R&B music for myself. And then I also trap music, rap music for other artists. Yeah, so you said lo-fi, right? Yes. Yeah, so I don't think everyone would know what that is. Do you mind explaining that? So lo-fi music is basically like a slowed down hip hop um, that's just strictly instrumental. Okay. A lot of times people just type in like chill beats or study music and that's the type of music that you'll pop up if you search it on YouTube. So the BPMs are normally like anywhere from like 50 to about 75 BPMs. So it's kind of chill. It's not very fast paced. It's very mellow. It's kind of relaxed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So low and then what is fi? Low fi, I think it kind of regards to like the frequency. So okay. like there's like a big joke amongst like producers and sound engineers that <laughs> low fi music has very crappy mixing and mastering. Okay. But it gives it this very authentic sound because lo-fi really comes from like sampling like vinyls like mm. vinyl music so normally like the record players have this certain type of warmness to it and it gives off this like scratchy kind of feel so when you pretty much chop up your samples and stuff it just makes it you know the frequency is kind of lower than what we would normally hear and like you know mainstream music you know, a lot of mainstream music they mix stuff at a frequency that's like 9600 hertz 96,000 hertz um, a lot of lo-fi music is mixed at like 44,000 and the frequency is okay. kind of like distorted sometimes. Okay, uh, you're saying a lot of technical terms and I'm kind of following them. <laughs> like when yeah. you said BPM, I was like, I know what that means. And I was, but then frequency, I was like, I don't know where you're going with that. <laughs> but no, I appreciate that. Do you make music for yourself as well? Yes. Okay. Um, so I pretty much do like, I like to do instrumental lo-fi music and then I do R&B music, so I sing and song great on that aspect. As of lately, the, I've been really focusing on a lot of lo-fi music. I've done this like 21 day meditation. Nice. And it really inspired me to really make some mellow music. I made this song called Mystic earlier in the year that I released. And I just like very chill, positive vibes and it's stuff that I create. I create this type of music so I can listen to it for myself when I go and meditate. Yeah. And so um, I really wanted to go ahead and create, get into the lo-fi a lot more just to create music for people to go ahead and just relax. Mm -hmm. I love that. And I feel like that's a reminder to like all of us as creatives, like making shit that we enjoy. Right. You're not doing it really for other people, but then other people can enjoy what you're what you're creating but in the end if you're like selling out and kind of doing it for other people then you'll never be like satisfied or like happy with it or whatever definitely agree like i i would say once the quarantine happened like before the quarantine started i was working with like five different artists Mm. and we i was pretty much producing music for them and everything was kind of like set up and organized with how we're going to do stuff but then once the quarantine once you know the quarantine happened things kind of got scrambled and plans got kind of messed up and people couldn't meet up Mm. so from that like i really just got into this at first i was like really depressed about it because i'm just like i put in all this hard work there's people that i've been working with on a song for like almost a year and it was just like you know i think plans got messed up but then i did my friend sent me this 21 day meditation by deepak chopra 
And I just really got inspired from listening to a track that I made earlier in the year. And I said, you know what, I'm going to continue to go ahead and make music, make some lo-fi meditation music for people and myself to like listen to. Yeah, I like that. What do you feel like drew you into music, like to work in music? I've just always liked the feeling that it gives me and I like the feeling that it gives other people. Like I, I am also a sound engineer and an audio tech, so I've done like events like weddings, I've done concerts and other things. And I think people, I don't want to say people take sound for granted, but I think they underestimate how powerful sound is. Mm-hmm. And so... It's like when I see, even in movies, like when I just see the effect of how people feel, like when a soundtrack comes on, that scene has a completely different feeling entirely yeah. uh, just because of the music. And so I really wanted to get into music because I wanted to, I felt inspired. I felt like, you know, for me, like I just sometimes, I just play the keys for 30 minutes just so I can, so the therapy for me. But at the same time, like I like the feeling that it gives other people because you know, you've sat down and listened to a track and then you just felt a vibe, you felt inspired and got up and did something or it helped you it helped you heal, you know, yeah. or it helped you work out and just other things like that. And I like the feeling that music gives to people as far as creating vibes and creating energy. Yeah. The energy kind of travels through you, I feel like. Yeah. For me, and I think a lot of people, like music triggers movement right and so then that that movement creates more energy and you already know like i'm all about music like (laughs) like it's so important to me and i like have noticed so i don't work with music specifically right like i mean i've done like projects here and there but typically i try to work silently because i get distracted so my favorite genre of music is is reggae it's like happy music like it gives me good energy. It just like kind of fills me up. It just, it's uplifting, right? And so if I do put some reggae on in the background, it does make me feel good. I just, I kind of have this idea in my head that it like is a little bit distracting and I just love silence. But I, I do notice myself like just in a better mood. Right, when you mention that, like, I think also there's, that's why I like doing the lo-fi music because a lot of lo-fi music doesn't have like any vocals on it. If anything, the most you might hear like music Oz. So I do notice that like if I listen to like rap music, sometimes I will get distracted because I'm paying attention to a lot of things that are going on. Yeah. Rap. So even when I'm working out, like sometimes I'll be, you know, you'll be at the gym and you kind of skip through tracks a lot. And this is because I think it's mainly because of the vocals that you hear. Mm. But with lo-fi music, you kind of hear just the repetitive sonic sound. Yeah. And it puts you in a trance. Yeah, I like that feeling that it can give you, like being like relaxed and just like kind of centered with um, slower music. And then I like upbeat instrumentals for working out because it just kind of like, I don't know, it kind of like drives you to like push, you know? What are you working on right now? Right now, I have uh, a track out that I just released last week. It's called Dreams on the Horizon. Okay. And I'm working, pretty much what I'm doing right now is just, I'm just releasing singles. So okay. I'm pretty much releasing about two a month. So you'll see two more in August. And uh, I am still working with some artists. I have an artist that's in Atlanta. Um, his name is Lakewood. We're where we finished this track. It's called Cost. And it's a very inspiring track. So we're releasing that in September. And it's really going to give uh, a lot of awareness to suicide awareness. Wow. And that's why I'm really excited about the track because even recently, like I had a friend that passed away due to that. And when I heard that song again, it really, it really helped, helped me find some peace. Mm. And so we're really excited about that track because we want to, again, spread that awareness. And especially in a time where, you know, we're in quarantine, a lot of people have a lot of things that are going on and it's hard to process everything that's going on because things are shut down and, you know, things are not regular. So I'm really excited for that song to go ahead and come out. But um, outside of that, like I'm pretty much releasing about two lo-fi tracks every every month. Mm-hmm. And right now, the two songs that I have out is Mystic and Dreams on the Horizon, which okay. you can find on all streaming platforms. The whole purpose of the song is to bring like awareness about, mm-hmm. you know, there's two aspects of the song. It's an aspect of the person who's committing suicide, and then there's the aspect of who how it affects the people around. Yeah. And then it also talks about like what could be the causes of mm-hmm. that as well. So to, to lead up to that effect, me, like I had a friend that, you know, it was very unexpected. And it's one of those things where people, it's always the people that you don't expect makes you question like, okay, why is this person doing this? 
And then at the same time, like, what's the effect now that that person is gone Mm -hmm. on them and then for the people that are around them? And I think it really puts in that perspective for prevention because you see how much pain that it goes that it brings. Um, And at the same time, I know from the aspect of the person who commits suicide, it's very hard to get into the mind of what they're thinking at that time. Yeah. But I think if we work together as a community to really understand what those different type of pressures are and just talk to people, mm-hmm. um, because sometimes it can just be a phone call, you know, um, it can be a phone call to somebody. It could be, you know, just saying hi, it's just smiling to somebody. When I'm outside, like riding my bike or like walking, I try to say like hello to everyone. If I'm in a good mood, you know, maybe I could spread it to these people and it could be, good for them and it might put a smile on their face and so i know that feeling of being surrounded by a lot of people but still feeling alone and like music is healing absolutely yeah for audio and music technology okay and i wanted to go to school because i wanted to perfect my craft and learn more about how i could use music and the awesome thing about going to school is that i got to see the opportunities the vast opportunities and what I could do with music. It doesn't necessarily have to be making records. Yeah. So like I see a lot of people that are like, you know, I have teachers that, you know, work for Paramount Pictures and, you know, did backstage for Metallica or front of house for Metallica. Yeah. So, and the people that come out of there, even like one of my mentors that graduated from that program, he's a big mixing engineer. He does EDC and he does work for the MBA. So it was an awesome experience to really see like how can I go ahead and use my music in different aspects. In this past semester, I was taking classes in post production, which is basically like stuff for movies. So I did like Foley, which is sound effects, and then I did dialogue and voice editing, and then I did post production, which is for pretty much putting together the entire sound and music for movies. Yeah. So my teacher really made a very big point to us at one point where he was saying that, you know, you're gonna make more money using music than you are making music. Mm. And he's like, making music is cool because he plays like five instruments and he loves playing on his guitar for hours. But from his experience working at Paramount Pictures and doing post-production, he's like, you, there's you, there's just so much more opportunity for you to make money doing stuff in TV and film mm-hmm. or making music for TV and film that uh, it's not necessarily always about trying to make records. So a lot of times I see people, like I said, I see producers online and they wanna know how they can get better or they wanna know like, oh, how can I get to the top of the charts with this hit? And it doesn't necessarily have to be that way. Like you don't have to do music just so that you can be like the baby. You know, they like Zaytoven and all these other producers that are out on the mainstream. I know friends that have placements for like love and hip hop. And it's the weirdest, like, it's mm-hmm. the most weirdest tracks, things that you would never, tracks that you would never even think of that make it there and you would never hear it, you might not notice it. But, you know, they continuously get paid because you get reruns and the amount of people that are watching it and stuff like that. And it could be only like a 30 second clip. It was really interesting to see the different facets of how you could kind of go ahead and do music. Also, too, like, I took a business class, so I've been really getting into like publishing. Mm. And I think with the internet right now and the way that it is, like, there's so much information for, artists and producers to really like get into the whole business of music as well. And you can do a lot of it on your own. Like you don't have to rely on this big major label or you don't necessarily have to get a manager. If you just do the homework and you do the research, like you can make it happen. And I have like my own publishing company. So that way it's like when I put out songs yeah. on streaming platforms, I also get money on the back end too as well for me creating it, yeah. you know, cause I'm the person who's performing it and creating it. I just tell people to kind of keep like a wide range and an idea of how you can go ahead and kind of use your music in different aspects of life. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you could partner with like meditation organizations or like coaches or, right. yeah, I think it's like looking beyond that like short view of like popularity and fame and seeing how like you could take this love for music and the skill you have and diversify it in different ways like commercials i think a lot of times people just think like the goal is always to be like famous or something like that and like it on the billboard top 10 <laughs> right. like yeah like i have no interest 
in getting famous. Like I have no interest in suddenly becoming famous. It looks stressful. It looks like like you have no privacy. Like I just want to be like comfortable. <laughs> you know, like being able to just work and do things that we enjoy and not have to do things that we just have to do. And that can be done in a, a different way. I've kind of begun the back end. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. You can hit like rock bottom or just get like so drained from all of this work if you're trying to like hustle so goddamn hard to be a fucking artist and like like very few people pop off like that right you know just take more opportunities and so i love that that's dope absolutely tell uh tell the people how they can find you so um i have a website it's www.robbyrhythms.com r-o-b-b-y-r-h-y-t-h-m-z.com um, you can find me on Instagram. It's Robbie underscore Rhythms. You can find me, like I just said, on Spotify. All the streaming platforms, my music is out there. So the two singles I have out right now are Mystic and Dreams on the Horizon. Yeah, that's pretty much where you can find me at. So Dope. All right. Thank you all so much for watching. Um, thank you for being a part of this journey. The Upside Down Smiley Show is about talking about real life shit with real life people with people that I want you to know, people that you need to know and need to just invest in everyday people, y'all. Just that's all I'm asking. Like you can learn so much from everyday people that are in your life or just set, like, you know, one degree away. Right. And so um, that's the whole purpose of my show. I do this every single week. Please join us if you have a topic that you're interested in chatting with me about. Let me know. And yeah, thanks. Bye.